Hey everybody, welcome to the All Brand Show. I'm Barbara from AllBrands.com and with me today is Serene Wilcoxon from Embroidery Garden. Reed Hi everyone. Hey, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I've got a not yet released in the hoop purse that I want to show you. I'm going to take you through the steps and I'm going to tell you all about all of the brand new hoop and press pads. We've got new sizes, new bundles, new machine brands. It's it's exciting. Oh my gosh. So if you love machine embroidery and embroidery garden, please stay tuned and we'll be right back with all of that great information. I see Rhonda and Carrie and Caroline and a lot of other people. We have Diane from Australia. Oh my goodness. Well, everybody, I'm so excited. We, we are going to be doing two giveaways during this live show today. So your first way to win is to comment hashtag all brands in the chat and you'll be eligible to win a $25 allbrands.com e-gift card on our website. Maybe you can use it on the products that you see today. So if you do see anything that you like um, that Rain shows, click shop product in the description of this video and you'll see everything that we talk about in the video. The other way to win is to share publicly on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube, just hop over to Facebook. If you haven't yet, um, go ahead and follow us and then click the share and share publicly there and we'll announce those at the end of the broadcast. So, yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, Reen. Yeah. You've been busy lately, haven't you? Yes, got a lot going on, a lot going on behind the scenes and stuff. And, um, you know, trying to get out some new designs. That's why this one is not quite yet released, but uh, it'll be coming probably later next week. And, you know, I'm going to talk today about all the new hoop and press pads. I'm going to show you how to stitch in, in the hoop design. We're going to use um, uh, Sony shaped foam inside the bag to give it some really nice structure. And, you know, I'll give you lots of tips and tricks along the way. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to get started. I'll let you go ahead and, and show us um, these new things that you have. All right. Thanks. <laughs> So thanks for joining me, everyone. Good to see you all here. Um, so like I said earlier, there are brand new hoop and press pads out. And if you don't know what hoop and press pads are, I'm going to be using them during this demo. I'm going to show you what they are and um, what you can use them for. But I did want to kind of go over the new sizes because ever since hoop and press pads came out about a year and a half ago, People have wanted more sizes, more bundles, and more machine brands, and that's what we did. So just to kind of give you an idea, I'm going to grab some of them here. And basically, these are the Brother Baby Lock ones. And um, I'll tell you, just kind of run through all the other ones really quick. Brand new, 4x4. Four four. We got the 5x7, the 6x10, the 8x8. Eight eight by 12. We have a bundle. Bundles are where we kind of bundle some of the sizes together and offer you better savings when you buy a bundle. So this bundle has the five by seven, six by 10, eight by eight, and eight by 12. Um, brand new, nine and a half by nine and a half. So you guys with those bigger machines, bigger hoops, 
We got them for you now. Nine and a half by 14. They're getting bigger and bigger. Um, and then we have a bundle. So this is a brand new bundle too, where we have the nine and a half by nine and a half and the nine and a half by 14. We've got the 10 and a half by 10 and a half, the 10 and a half by 16, and a bundle for the uh, 10 and a half and the um, 10 and a half by 16. Also that I did not bring out, we have um, a bundle for the Luminaire. Um, so if you just went out and bought a Luminaire, you're going to buy a Luminaire, you know it came with three or possibly four hoop sizes. So that bundle includes um, the 5 by 7 the uh, 10 and a half by 10 and a half, 10 and a half by 16, and the four by four. So, um, you know, these are all available through all brands too. So you can um, get any of these pads. We have them for the multi-needle machines. There are three inside here, five by seven, eight by eight, eight by 12. We have them for Bernina. The Berninas uh, use oval pads, um, oval hoops, and there are the three sizes for Bernina. Also, now, I'm not going to show you all of these other ones. I'm just going to quickly go over the sizes. Um, we did come out with ones for Janome. So there was a 5x7 for Janome, an 8x8, a 200x260, which is actually their 8x11. Um, the 11x11, that's for the brand uh, new. No, it's not really new, but it's their top of line uh, M17. The 11x18.1. We also have those um, bundled for the Janome. It's the 5 by 7 the 11 by 11 and the 11 by 18.1 We have a bundle for the Janome 500 uh, 550e, which includes 5 by 7 8 by 8 and 8 by 11 Then we have Viking and Foth. And we have the 120 by 120 the 200 by 360 the 260 by 360 and then we bundle them. So I think we got just about everything covered. And again, you can get all these at um, allbrands.com. Oh, I see a lot of people are coming in. And today, what I'm going to be showing you, besides how to use hoop and press pads and what you can use them for, I'm going to be stitching out this in the hoop purse. Now, this one, um, this one's kind of made with a really soft vinyl. But if you kind of look at it, see how what nice structure it has? Um, it's quilted, and if I hold it sideways, I think you can kind of see the the real, the definition of the quilting, and that's because of the foam that I used. So I've been using the So Any Shape foam from Dime in a lot of my bags lately, and I just love the dimension that um, it gives the bag, and it you know makes it really nice and structurally. Um, just beautiful. This bag has a flap, so it's going to be two hoopings. We have the flap on the um, outside here of the flap. I used one of the designs from my hand sketch floral board, uh, not borders, it's the hand sketch floral collection, which is also available from all brands. Um, there are 25 five by seven designs. To make it fit onto the flap, I kind of edited it and took out some of the um, other elements of it. Um, there is a strap on the bag. It's optional. You can add the tabs to hold the hardware if you want. Uh, lift the flap up, flap up, and there is a zippered pocket inside. And, of course, no raw edges, fully lined. And this is what we're going to be doing today. So what do you guys think about it? I see Anne's here and um, lots of other people. So <laughs> go ahead and tell oh, what we've let's, got. Um do you want to hear what some folks are saying, Ree? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, Paula, if you guys haven't met Ree yet, she is a fantastic digitizer of embroidery garden designs. She's the founder of that company, and she makes these fantastically cute snowball designs. Paula says that she's waiting for them to arrive. They'll be there Monday. Um, here's another shout out for you from Patricia Hale. Huge fan of reading, superb designs and instruction. I agree. <laughs> Joanne Banco's watching. Hi, Joanne. Hi, I'll <laughs> see oh, you soon. soon. <laughs> Rhonda says she uses her hoop and press pads all the time. Aren't they wonderful? And someone else, let's see, Pamela says that she has them for her multi-needle and single-needle machines. They work great for all types of projects. 
And we did have a question from Paula. She says, are the hoop and press pads for the Janome Envy Force as well? Yeah, I'm not real sure what um, hoop sizes come with that. If you go to All Brands and, you know, there's a drop down menu and you can see the different sizes of uh, hoop and press pads that are available. Um, like I said, I'm not real familiar with your particular machine, but, you know, you can always, uh, you know, send a message. Me too. Yes, I love the variety. Um, oh, and Joanne says that you'll be with her on Saturday. That's exciting. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I love it. And I loved that um, fabric that you chose for the purse. So, so precious. Yeah, that's just some real soft vinyl on that one. I am going to be using some cotton fabrics today just so you can kind of, you know, see the difference. It's all about, you know, the fabrics you use and your choices. <laughs> oh, April says, still nervous for in the hoop, even though I've done it a couple times, including the zipper case. You shouldn't be nervous. It's it's fun. <laughs> just remember oh, yeah. to unzip before you stitch. <laughs> that's the only thing you have to worry about. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it so far as far as questions go. All right. So go ahead and I'll get started on the bag then. Mm -hmm. All right. So like I said, this bag is made in two hoopings because you got to make the flap and then the flap gets added in and stitched in when you're doing the actual body of the purse. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to need. Um, I am using one of the dime hoops to do the flap in, um, basically because I only have one eight by eight hoop and the purse fits in an eight by eight hoop. Um, I have one standard um, eight by eight hoop. So I'm gonna use my dime magnetic snap monster hoop. Uh, perfectly fine to use uh, these magnetic hoops for any in the hoop designs. So this is the flap. And all I did was I hooped a no-show um, cutaway stabilizer. I laid down a piece of the foam and I'll give you a, a close up look at the foam here in a minute. And I stitched the first step. I went ahead and stitched that. And all it did was you can see it stitched the shape of the flap. And then I took my scissors and I trimmed all the way around. And this is to keep the bulk out of the um, seam. When we go to turn, it's going to make it lay really nice and flat. So the next step is going to be to just take our piece of fabric, which is going to be the front of the flap, and center it over our batting or our foam. And what I like to do is I like to pin. You know, you could tape it down, but pinning works better for me. It holds it really nice and tight, and I don't want any kind of movement or any type of puckering. So I just like to uh, pin the fabric down. I make sure that when I pin it, I'm pinning well out of the way of where the machine is going to be stitching. Let me just get the other side. And then we're going to go to the machine and it's going to base this fabric in place for us. I am stitching on my uh, Luminaire 3 today, which I happen to get from all brands. Thank you, Reen. <laughs> I just love it, Barbara. It's, it's just fantastic. Oh, my goodness. And Rhonda just got one, too, an XP3 from us. And there, it, I own one. It, I, it's my favorite machine for embroidery, especially with that huge hoop size, 10.5 by 16 inches. Oh, yeah. So all this is doing is basting the fabric down in place because we are going to put that flower design on the front of it. Thank you, Marina. Yes. And I sure did a wonderful machine. <laughs> and now I'm just going to let it start to stitch this um, floral. And it, again, it's stitching the same flower. Let me grab the sample here. Um, it's going to stitch this exact same floral. This is from the garden, um, the hand sketch floral set. And it's raw edge applique. So I'm going to give you kind of a close up look. I happen to stitch this one in vinyl. It's these are heat transfer glitter vinyl. And uh, I'm going to stitch one today just using fabric. 
for the fabric, you do have to prepare it. And what I did was I just ironed like um, steam a seam or, you know, heat and bond light, something onto the back of the fabric. The set also comes with all of the SVG files. Um, so I have my SVG file already cut out of the flower shape. And again, it does have the um, uh, fusible already on the back side. When I cut on my scan and cut, how I actually do it is, you know, I've got my um, fusible on the back side of my fabric. I do fabric side down and um, cut around it. And you can see, look at that, cut just perfectly. Love it. But the set does include those um, SVG files for you. And Caroline, I know you love the hand sketch florals. You have them and you do some amazing projects with them. So it stitched the, um, I'll give you a look at the machine. It went ahead and it stitched the leaf part. Again, these are hand sketch. The set is called hand sketch. So it, it gives you that look. All the designs are light and airy. And you're gonna notice that when we um, stitch the flower down, the outline isn't really always going to hit right where it's supposed to. And that's because it's that hand sketched kind of look. So it's intentional. So it did the placement here on the flap. I'm going to bring it over to the table. And what we're going to do is line up our little flower. And you can see it lines up perfectly there. I don't know if I, yep, I got my iron on. I am going to use the hoop and press pad. Let me grab one of them here. And basically all I'm doing right now is I'm using this one just as a pressing pad by my sta uh, sewing station. Um, so you can use them in that way also. And I'm just gonna grab my iron and I love this Aliso iron. And I know you can get them at all brands. Um, this one is the M2 Mini Project Iron, and all I'm going to do is press it, uh, press down. I'm not moving the iron back and forth. I'm just pressing it down, getting it enough to adhere. So the next step is going to finish off the flower. It's going to add all the detail and everything into the flower. So let me get it back on the machine and going. And so the hoop and press pads are thick wool pads. They have a non-slip surface on the back side so that when you're working with them, they're not gonna slide around. And the whole intention of a hoop and press pad, and let me grab one of these that I have here. And I gotta move some of this stuff over. But let's look at this. This is an eight by eight hoop and I'm going to move this eight by 12 because when you go to use your press pads you want to use the corresponding size um, pad to your hoop so this is an applique design and when you do appliques the best way to press one is from the back side so if I put my pad down turn the hoop over and place it over the hoop and press pad. What it does is the hoop and press pad underneath here has filled the void. And when I say the void, if we look at our traditional hoop, it has depth to it. So if I didn't have anything underneath my hoop and my hoop, when I went to press on it, I would be pressing down on my stabilizer, possibly, you know, dislodging it, making it shift. But when I put the hoop and press pad underneath it, I've got support underneath there so that I can press from the back side. And when you are pressing an applique, you want to do it from the back side because the fusible is facing up right now and the heat from the iron activates the fusible. And what it does is it draws it up and it draws it up into the base fabric so that you get a really nice, um, really nice bond on your appliques. Have you ever done an applique and, you know, this one is kind of large. 
and you'll get kind of that snow plowing or the bubbles or something. That's why you want to press it from the back side. So that's one good thing for a hoop and press pad is Three. that you can press in the hoop. I love this. I've been working on um, patches lately and anything with adhesive on the back. Deborah Jones always taught me in stabilizer class. You always want to, when you're adhering, like heat and bond light or or any kind of um, patch attach or anything that sticks it to the garment, an applique, um, you want to pull the glue backwards into the fiber, not put the iron on top of the, the applique. Right. And, it, you know, it may melt it, but it's not going to pull it that way. Right. So. You want to get a really nice bond and that's how you do it from the back side. And you got to have something underneath the hoop because if you don't, you're going to be pushing down and you know, you're going to just dislodge your project possibly or distort it in some way. Right. Right. And I have that in a uh, little Oliso iron mines pink, but the yellow is super cute too. Everyone I love it. it. It's the reason <laughs> that I like it. I was using another like little kind of craft iron, but I got this one and I love it because the surface is a lot bigger and it has like this nice little point here at the top. So, you know, sometimes you just got to get in the corners, you know, the hoop and um, it's great. I love it. Let me go grab mine and I'll, I'll talk about mine too, but it, it holds water in it too. So you can do steam. Yes, it is a steam, but you wow. know, when I do things in the hoop um, and you're going to see me, you know, work some more on this purse, and go to the back side and stuff. I don't steam when I'm in the hoop. And the reason I don't is, you know, sometimes you use different stabilizers and stuff. And if you steam, a st uh, you know, with the stabilizer, um, you know, sometimes it'll wrinkle, it'll distort, uh, et cetera. <laughs> so let's go. Oh, Ray, oh here's no. mine. Do you mind? Oh, it's pink. You got, got me cute. excited. Okay, so the cord wraps around whenever it's neatly done around this, whenever you're like storing it, but it has this little like um, resting plate where you can yes. actually put the hot iron, isn't it? Yeah, where you can put the hot iron on it when you're not using it. That way you don't have to worry about it like flopping over. Um, but the way that it feels in your hand is just really nice and it's like it's a big enough surface area to get inside of a like a five by seven hoop. Um, so and, and it's not so tiny that you have to take forever to iron it. So right. And you know what I saw the other day? Let me show you this, Barbara. I don't know if you oh, uh, know this. But <laughs> you got your snap hoop. I got my snap hoop over here. All right. Um, so you had it on, right? And it kind of it that iron actually fits inside of this. See how it fits on there? Yeah. But when you're actually using it, if you turn it over, then you have a nice flat surface. On this side, um, you have it, you know, where it's kind of raised up so the iron can actually fit in there and this will stay on the bottom. But if you turn it over, then you set it down. I don't know if you can see that. And now it's a nice flat surface for it to sit on. Exactly. And it has this little hook for if you like to hang things in your studio and it will just hang. Yeah, I just I just love it. I'm so glad that I uh, saw that and got it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the little um, steam buttons on the side that you can press to get it to seam. And then this little um, dial here turns it to the different temperatures. And then this part comes off for water. I haven't used it with the water yet just because I prefer dry. Um, yeah, I haven't used mine with water yet either, um, but I love it. You know, I was even thinking about getting, you know, one of their bigger irons even. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love those because they have the legs. <laughs> oh, yeah. It jumps up. <laughs> right. I'll add those in the link description so everybody can check it after the video today. And um, it's the only iron that has legs. So it has a, a handle on it that senses when you hold it. And it will pull the legs up. And then when you let it go, you don't have to put it on its back. You can leave it and just lifts up because it's got stilts. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I'll let you get back oh, to no, it. Oh, no. Interrupt anytime. <laughs> All right. So my, my flower got done stitching. 
And I'm going to take the next piece of fabric. Remember, this is just the flap. Put it over the top. Um, I do have to change my thread real quick because I don't want to stitch this in black. I'm going to be stitching the rest of the purse in a thread that matches that sort of teal kind of fabric. And I always use um, exquisite thread. Mm -hmm. We just have a new, um, if everyone wants to get like every um, 288 colors, I'll put that in the description link below of all the exquisite threads. Very I've got all 288 and uh, I just love them. <laughs> So I'm going to just let this stitch around. <laughs> Hopefully, if I turn my head, it's not going to uh, do anything. And we're going to look at the next part of the purse coming up. All right, so this is going to be the next hooping. I kind of already have it kind of ready. I've got all my pieces cut. And I did want to give you kind of a close-up look at that foam, the sewing shaped foam, but you kind of see how thick it is. Um, this is, Eileen Roche um, developed this, designed it especially for machine embroidery. It has a trico finish on both sides. It's not fusible. And I like the fact that it's not fusible, um, but I love the body that it gives, um, you know, in the hoop bags and purses, um, you can use it for sewing. To, you know, if you sew and make bags, you can use it for placemats. You can use it for, you know, all kinds of things. Some of the little mini hangings that I make, I use it in there. I think you see the bunny one. Whoops, it's over here on this side that I did recently. And I use foam in there instead of batting. And it makes it hang just really nice and straight and just gives it a lot of texture and stuff. So, you know, if you think that um, foam is going to add too much bulk or something, it's not. I've done even five by seven bags. And we know those are, you know, a little bit smaller with the uh, foam in them. And there's absolutely no problem turning them or anything. I mean, they, they're just great. The foam is really nice. Okay, so this is done stitching. And I'm just going to leave it in the hoop for now. We're going to be taking this out and trimming it and turning it. But I'm going to Go ahead and show you, um, you know, finish showing you what you need for the rest of the bag. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing up my bag pattern here on my uh, machine. And just one second, I'll have it all ready to go. Okay. And then I just have the rest of my pieces cut out. So again, eight by eight hoop. I've gone ahead and I have hooped, again, the um, no-show uh, stabilizer. I did go ahead and stitch the zipper down. And, you know, the reason that it is stitched down, I was actually going to start doing this purse. And, you know, life of a digitizer, things get in the way, stuff happens. Um, there's something else that's got to be done. So I had gotten the zipper stitched down and that's as far as I got. It's been sitting here in this hoop like this for probably close to three weeks now. So the first step, what it would do is it stitches two lines so you know where to put the zipper. My zippers go right side up and I always put the pull on the left. That's just me so that when the bag is done, it's going to um, unzip from left to right. You tape it in place, and usually I, I put a piece of tape, you know, coming down um, to hold uh, one edge of the zipper in and to hold the other edge in. The next step comes, and you can see these little white lines here on both sides. That's what stitches the zipper in place. And so now, you know, I don't got to worry. It's not moving. It's stitched down to the stabilizer. So to continue on with this design... Let me grab my hoop and press pad because this is another great time to use the hoop and press pads. I'm going to lay it down because I need to work on the back side of the hoop now. And a lot of in the hoop designs, you have to work on the back side. And whenever you are on the back side with the hoop and press pad underneath, you have the support that you need 
to be able to work on the back side of the hoop. So on this um, next step, and I'm pulling some tape off because I hadn't pulled my tape, uh, had not gotten it ready. So I'm just uh, grabbing a couple of pieces of tape here. But the first piece to go down is a piece of lining. And it's going to go right side down. And I'm going to line up one of the straight edges with the placement line that was uh, sewn that showed me where to place the zipper. So I'm just going to get it in place. And with the hoop and press pad underneath, I can take my thumb and I can really press that tape down. That's you know, a good feature. Mm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. getting excited again, Reen. It, so it many does. times I flip my hoop over, I put pressure on it and it stuck that little stabilizer down enough to move it in the hoop. Oh, thank you so much. And, you know, Barbara, I did a lot of classes. I did a lot of classes for all brands. And, you know, sometimes people want to try to do these things in their lap, you know, and that's that's even harder, you know, to um, get your tape to stick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the hoop and press pad is just giving you that support that you need because it doesn't matter what kind of tape you use, really. You got to be able to push it down to make it stick. So right. you need the hoop and press pad underneath to help you with that. I'm a believer. Thank you, Reen. <laughs> so again, I'm going to get this other side um, tape down. And again, I can press as hard as I want to get that tape because nothing is worse than picking your hoop up, moving it to your machine, and having the piece on the back side fall off. I see Trisha says, doesn't work in your lap. Yep, it does not work in your lap, but I saw people doing it in their lap. <laughs> it would be hard to do. So the next piece is going to be, this is actually going to be the main piece um, on the front and back side of the bag, but this is going to be on the front side. And again, I'm just going to take one of the straight edges, line it up with the bottom edge of the zipper, and get this one taped down. And then it's going to go back to the machine and it's going to um, stitch a line here. And that stitches on that lining piece on the back side and the piece on the front side. I just want to make sure that fabric on the back, my lining piece, is not folded underneath there. And I'm going to go ahead and get that stitch down. Oh, I see uh, um, someone said they love their hoop and pa press pads. Lisa does. So many people are saying that. <laughs> I'm monitoring the comments here. It's going crazy. I, I think everyone here owns one already. If you haven't yet, please. I don't know. If they don't, you, you really <laughs> need them. Um, yeah, it's one of those things kind of too, like, you kind of might be like, oh, I don't know if I need it. Uh, uh, but you get it. And then it's like, what was I waiting for? You know, right. you'll find that you just can't really do in the hoop without it or that it, your projects are going to turn out so much better because in a minute here, I'm going to be pressing on the backside with the iron. Goodness. So um, that is a really good time. That's really why I, I invented them, you know, basically. And I did it because I like to press when I do in the hoop projects, if I was doing this just on a sewing machine, you get up after every step and you press, you know, and so why not press when you're in the hoop? <laughs> right. And it's like being a carpenter without a leveler. I mean, why not get, get the right tools that you need? <laughs> That's right. You know, you, you really need them. So, all right. So to continue on with the design, I am going to be putting, let me move this up so you guys can see it. Um, my sew any shape foam down. So this is the front of the bag and I'm going to take the straight edge. I don't think I cut that straight. So I'm going to use this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the straight edge with that seam that I just stitched. Now, remember I said this had Trico lining on both sides. It kind of slips a little bit. And when we pull this fabric down over top of this, we don't want this moving because when it gets stitched down, if this foam shifts, you know, we'll have a flat spot instead of, you know, have that foam underneath. 
So my little tip is I use a kid's glue stick, just a regular old Elmer's glue stick. It's purple, dries clear. It's not going to hurt your machine. It's not going to hurt your fabric. It's not going to hurt anything. And I'm going to put a line kind of right there so that when I put this down, oops, I wanted to use this edge. And I'm going to line it up. And sometimes I even take a little bit and just put a dot here and there just to keep this in place. And I know it's not going to move or shift on me um, if I use the glue stick. Now I'm I am so excited, Rain, to try this foam. I haven't personally tried it yet, but. You will love it, Barbara. Oh. You will absolutely love it. It's. I didn't bring this other bag that I did recently. I used actual, you know, faux leather, like the really good stuff. And did some quilting on the front of the bag. And you should see the dimension that it gave it. I mean, it just turned out beautiful. Wow. Okay, so all I did was just fold this piece of fabric down. And again, I like to pin, especially when, you know, I have, you know, this thick foam. It's not thick. I shouldn't say thick because it's not thick. It um, was designed as specifically for machine embroidery. So um, you know that it's uh, it works well. So I have this pulled down and the next step is going to do some quilting here. And while it does that, I'm gonna show you another um, use for hoop and press pads. Let me just get this on the machine. It's gonna do like a diamond uh, kind of motif in here. Just let it get started here. Wanda says, in the hoop projects are always fun. They are, I absolutely love them. And let's see, I forgot what I was going to get out. Okay, so I did show you the applique, which is a great um, use for in uh, hoop and press pads. You know, sometimes we have to remove stitches. Don't you hate when that happens and you got to take stitches out? The best thing to do if you have to remove stitches, if you possibly can, is leave it in the hoop. You know, don't take it out, leave it in the hoop. And what I've actually kind of been training myself to do is when I have something in the hoop, I always turn it over to the back side before I take it out to make sure nothing happened, you know, like no fabric got folded or anything like that, because it's always easier to fix things if you do it while you're still in the hoop. So, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and we have to correct them. And it is easier to remove stitches while it's already in the hoop and if you use your hoop and press pad. So let's just say, for example, I needed to remove some of these um, uh, satin stitches or maybe I have fill stitches. But if you place it over the hoop and press pad, and again, now you have that support underneath there so you can press on the back side without um, you know, messing up your project. You can take any type of uh, tool, even if it's a, um, uh, what do you call it? A seam ripper or whatever. <laughs> um, I like to use the dime um, stitch ripper. And all you would do is just turn it on. And then you could, I'm not actually going to remove stitches in this because I'm, I'm going to use this project for something. But you would just be able to press down or if you had fill stitches in here, you know, press down and, you know, move your tool and get those stitches out and then be able to pull them away from the front side. So, you know, that's a great way to remove stitches if you have to. You really don't want to do it from the front side because you take the chance of, you know, gouging the fabric. Maybe you're embroidering on somebody's, you know, coat and, you know, you don't have to replace that stuff. So if you can, always remove from the back side and always, you know, keep it in the hoop if you can. If you see a mistake and it's already in the hoop, don't take it out. Leave it in there to uh, try and get rid of, you know, your mistake. It makes it easier. I'm so glad that you talked about that stitch ripper because that is my best friend because guess who's making mistakes all the time because they're human, me. <laughs> so and, does. 
in conjunction with that hoop and press pad, this thing is a dream come true. It basically erases all the stitches. Uh, it's wonderful. Yeah, and you know, using the hoop and press pad, it really, really does help. You know, when you got to do that stuff, it's already frustrating enough, and you're already nervous enough trying to remove stitches, hoping you don't, you know, make a bigger mess and ruin something even further. <laughs> Right. So they're, um, I think they plug into the wall or they're battery operated and there's two different head types on it. There's a small one for getting into little areas and then there's a wide one for doing a lot of stitches at one time. Yeah, this one's like for the fill and then there's another one that, uh, I don't know, it's probably only maybe half an inch wide and that's for the column stitches. And yeah, it is uh, cordless. You can charge it and... I don't know. It's great. I, well, I don't want to say I use it all the time. <laughs> I try not to make mistakes, but when you do and you have it, it's handy certainly to have. Sherry has it as well. She's a lifesaver. I agree. Must have. And I saw someone ask a question. They, they said something about craft foam instead of the so any shape i'm using so any shape foam it's not craft foam that's not something i would want to put inside of a bag um this is made specifically for i actually have a package right here so this is what it is um it's let's see i'm just going to read what it says it's machine embroidery and quilting friendly like i said before eileen roche from Dime developed this and she developed it specifically for machine embroidery. It, so the needle goes through it very nicely, very easily. Um, it's lightweight, it's easy to use. You can iron it. Um, I iron this uh, all the time because you know, you get it in a package like this, you're gonna take it out and of course it's gonna be, you know, wrinkled and stuff, but um, you can iron over it. It keeps its shape and there is no, fusible on it again. And that's what I like. I don't like this, you know, type of foam that has fusible on it because I don't know, I've made bags before and you fuse the fabric onto the foam and no matter what you go and you turn it and it wrinkles and you cannot get those wrinkles out because it's fused down. So I really prefer my foam not to have any fusible on it. Oh, I love it. And the price point's great too on our website in the description. It's only $29.99. Yeah, and you're <laughs> getting, what is it? 36 by 58 inches. I mean, that's, that's a big piece. I mean, you can make quite a few things with that. Right. <laughs> it says on here, wrinkles disappear with medium heat iron. Yeah, I iron it. That's wonderful. Ah, I can't wait to try that one. That one's in my cart right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, especially if you make any kind of bags or anything, um, placemats, you know, and you can take them and just kind of scrunch them up and then they just kind of flatten back out again. You know, it doesn't um, like hold, uh, you know, a crease or a wrinkle if you, you know, right. it up or anything. I've tried to use the third party stuff. And a lot of times, like if I'm able to sew through it and it clears my um, foot height, okay. Um, Whenever I try to put all the seams together, it gets a little crazy. So I trust that Eileen Roche has put us in a good position with <laughs> this foam. Yeah, the foot height thing, I'll kind of get into that a little bit when I get near to finishing the bag because, you know, you're going to start building up some layers in here. So, okay. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to get back to it. All right, so it did the quilting. And again, it's just, you know, some cute little diamond uh, shapes. But we need to go to the back side again. And I'm going to use my hoop and press pad, just center it over the pad. And at this time, I'm going to remove the tape because I don't need this anymore. It held the uh, fabric in place until it got stitched down. Let me just take it off. Oh, and the fact that I was able to press it down so well with that hoop and press pad is <laughs> a little hard for me to get off. And now this piece is going to get folded down. If I can get the tape off of my fingers. <laughs> All right. That texture is beautiful from the foam underneath. Uh, yeah, isn't I it? See it popping through. It's beautiful. 
and then you're going to take this piece of lining and fold it down. And, you know, most people are just going to like fold it down and, you know, put a piece of tape here. Well, this is what happens. Can you kind of see this? I call it the bubble. If I hold it this way, kind of see that bubble? It's not flat. And so when your project is done um, and you open up your bag, you're going to see this little bubble right here. So it's in the way of the zipper too. It's gonna be a yeah, little you know. So this is why you need to press when you're in the hoop. So I, here I move my hoop and press pad a little bit. I've so, always heard Rain that I hate to say this, but it's true. An iron is just as important as your sewing machine because an iron finishes more surface area of the material than your sewing machine stitches together. So, right. Yes, and being so, able to. Pressing the hoop is perfect. So at this time, I mean, you can probably see that moving a little bit. So that's why you want to press in the hoop. You want your lining pieces. You want this fold here to be very nice and very flat and very crisp. And again, I'm not ironing back and forth. I'm just pressing. And again, I'm not using steam because sometimes, you know, everyone uses a different type of stabilizer. And if you steam it, Sometimes, you know, it, it might bubble or something and distort, and you don't want any kind of distortion happening. So I taped it down, of course. I have to put another piece on. Hoop and press pad is still underneath there. The long edge of this lining piece is going to go even with the placement line of the zipper up here. And again, while it's there, the hoop and press pad is underneath. I can press down really, really well to get my tape um, down. I got to grab some more tape here. And I'm going to tape this other side down. And then we're going to go to the front side of the hoop. And at this point, I'm going to take another main fabric piece. This is the piece that goes above the zipper. Put it right side down and line it up with the top edge of the zipper. And again, I'm going to tape it in place and put it on the machine. And it's going to stitch a line here. And that's going to attach the two pieces that I just taped on. I want to make sure that that piece doesn't move underneath the hoop um, when I transfer it over to the machine. And the fact that I was able to press down so hard, um, it, it's not going to move. Maureen loves her hoop and press pad. Yay. <laughs> and while that's stitching real quick, you know, another use for your hoop and press pads is just to have as a pad by your machine. So if you like to quilt and, you know, basically after every step, you know, you sew a strip on, you have to fold it and you have to press. So why get up? <laughs> keep your little iron by you and use your hoop and press pad as just a little press pad near your machine. Whether you do, you know, sewn quilt blocks or you do, um, you know, in the hoop quilt blocks. So it's just handy too to have. Well, Gwen, I'm glad you're learning about hoop and press pads because they are really amazing. I'm surprised at the response that, um, you know, hoop and press pads have had. So now that this piece has gotten stitched on, it's time to go to the back side again. So there's the hoop and press pad underneath. Again, I don't need the tape anymore. And I saw someone ask a question about the tape. Um, it's just a sur surgical tape that I use. Can get it really, um, at the drugstore even. Now it's time to fold this piece up. And again, I'm going to want to use my iron and be able to press to get that nice, um, flat, crisp fold here. So that when I open up my bag, this is the inside the lining. When I open this up, my lining pieces are going to be laying so nice and so flat. It's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to grab it some more tape. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I'm drooling. <laughs> now, while I'm on the back side, too, here's another use for hoop and press pads. So it's still underneath my hoop. 
And at this point in this design, I need to trim away this piece of stabilizer here. Underneath that piece of stabilizer is my zipper. And I need to um, remove this so that when my bag is done, I have access into my bag. So the hoop and press pad underneath here, and I love to use these little tie scissors. I actually think I got these at All Brands one year when I was uh, down there teaching. Yes, I'm gonna add those to the shop product link in the description. Yeah, but I love I love them because they're curved and they are very sharp. The little tips are very sharp. And you know, you're doing detail work here. Um, a lot of people, what they do too, is they take the point of the scissors and they poke them down into that stabilizer, but they don't realize what they're doing is they're also getting the zipper. So when you take the tip of the scissors and you poke it down, I can feel my hoop and press pad kind of pushing back on, on me when I'm, you know, pushing my scissors down in there. So I know I'm not going too deep and I'm getting that, um, uh, zipper. Because if you cut your zipper, that's kind of one of those things you can't fix. <laughs> you just kind of have to start over at that point. And you can see how sharp these scissors are. I basically just put the point underneath that stabilizer and just took them and just slided them along and it took out that little strip really quickly and easily. So now that that's done, I'm going to go to the front side. This piece has to get folded up. Oops, I'm going to put a piece of foam underneath here. And I better use my glue because I don't want um, it to shift on me. Again, that's just Gloomer, uh, Elmer's glue. <laughs> and I'm just going to line it up there, take this piece, fold over. And I don't know if you can see it, but I kind of got another, I got a little fold right there. Must have been when I, Put it, turned it over on the hoop and press pad. Well, I got my hoop and press pad under there. I'm just going to iron that back down. All right. And I am going to take my pins and pin this. And the reason I like to pin is because I really like to kind of pull this to make sure that, you know, it's really nice. It's really flat. And then the next step is going to make a placement for the flap. And we're gonna have to get the flap ready. So um, let me get this on the machine and it's going to just stitch a couple little placement lines up there so I know where to center the flap. And I'm gonna grab the flap and we have to get that ready. Kind of forgot about it. <laughs> so this was um, the flap if you are a little bit late coming in. And these snap hoop monsters really do grip. Let me move that out of the way. And what I need to do now is trim around uh, the outside of this flap. Basically, I'm gonna trim, I got some pins in here. I better get those out before I clip those. Um, about a quarter of an inch away from the stitching all the way around and also on the straight edge up here uh, at the top of the flap. And these scissors are, these are the Kai. Um, they're part of the uh, 7250 series. These happen to be the serrated ones. Do you use the serrated ones, Barbara? Yes, I have several pair. Um, I love the serrated ones. They're wonderful. They're made in Japan. They cut through fabric like warm butter. It's just amazing. And the serrated ones, they're a must have if you're gonna um, work with anything that is slippery like cuddle fabric or satin or um, you know, tool, anything like that. And all I'm doing now is just kind of clipping my curve just as if you were sewing something you always have to clip the curve and i'm going to reach in turn the flap to the right side and get the corners pushed out and you know that had that piece of foam in there and look how nicely it it pushed out 
you know, it made a really nice shape here. And I am going to give this a quick little press. And again, I don't have to get up and walk away from my machine because I got a hoop and press pad here that I can just use as a little press pad. And then I'll just kind of press the front again a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to put the flap into the purse. I'm going to take these pins out because I don't need those. Gwen, if you've never heard of the serrated ones, you really, really need them. They have like, I don't know, what is it, Barbara? I, I can see it. I mean, I can see the little serration here. Right. Um, on the blade and they grab everything so nicely. I'm finding myself using these for everything, even if it's not a slippery fabric, because I seem to have more, more control when I cut, you know, when I'm cutting around something, it's like those little serrations are grabbing the fabric and kind of helping me, um, you know, it's helping me. <laughs> right. They come in, um, and in the link in the description of this video, uh, we have a 4-inch, an 8-inch, a 9.5-inch, a 10-inch, and 11-inch, all in the Kai serrated scissor line. So Yeah, I think um, these are the 10s. Yeah, I love them. And wonderful. even these little ones are serrated. Um, there's a style that, that is serrated for these little ones, too. Hmm. All right. So now at this point, I don't know if you can see, let me kind of hold it up here. There's a little line here and a little line here. And that's telling me where I need to place my flap. So I'm going to get this lined up and I need to stand up and kind of look over, you know, the project to make sure I get this in the right place. And I'm lining up the raw edge of the flap with the top of this little line that's stitched. You just want to make sure it's centered. And I'm going to use a big piece of tape. I kind of put my tape too in just a tape dispenser. Genius. It just makes it easier to do. And this tape too, it's like I buy one inch, but I tear it. It's like perforated so that I get a whole lot more uses out of it. <laughs> Someone asked what line of fabric you're using. Do you remember? This just came from one of the big box stores. Um, I, I didn't have anything. My quilt shop in town closed and, oh, no. you know, yeah. Oh, goodness. So I didn't have, I don't have a good place now to buy fabric, except if I go online, you know, I can buy fabric. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> The next step now is going to stitch this down so that it stays in place and doesn't move. I'm not going to uh, unzip the zipper halfway yet. I'm going to wait until after I've done this step. So I'm going to put it on the machine. It's going to stitch it down so that it stays in place and doesn't move. Everything looks good on the back side. I think, too, it looks so beautiful because you chose a really contrasting color for the flower from your design set. Yeah. Um, that uh, this hand sketched florals is what it is, right? Right. So and they're 25. Uh, they're beautiful, beautiful floral designs in the set. Like I said, I took this one and I kind of altered it a little bit just because I couldn't fit it onto the flap if I didn't. All right. So this is stitched down. And just let me get some things over here at the table ready. And all right, I'm going to. OK, so this is how it's looking so far. And remember, I told you, like, the outline doesn't really hit it everywhere, like, you know, exactly on the edge. And that's because these are hand sketched. They have that look, that light, airy look. And so that's supposed to be like that <laughs> in case you're thinking, hmm. What's up with that? So I'm going to take this tape off because the flap is stitched down in place. And I am going to go ahead and unzip my zipper halfway so I don't forget. And I, I don't know if you can see, but I tape my pull down. I always tape the pull of the zipper down because, you know, sometimes it's, you know, jumping around and moving and I don't want my needle to hit it. 
Let me grab the pull and get it unzipped halfway. Now the next step is going to put a couple more. Um, well, actually, it's going to tack down tabs. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you want to add tabs, let me get the uh, sample again so you can see what I'm talking about. So that's how I attached the strap. I use swivel hooks. And then here are the little tabs that I'm going to place now. You do have to have your hardware that you're going to use attached to your little tab. And the tab is, you know, it's just folded fabric. Um, and then I just took the D rings that I'm using for this one, put the tab through. And I like to just machine sew, you know, the ends together because I hate when I put tabs down and, you know, they kind of move. I'm trying to, like, you know, you'll get something like that. So if you stitch them down, it just takes a second, just a basting stitch across there. It keeps them in place and you don't have to worry about them you know, turning out bad in the end. Reen, can I ask you a question? Sure. I'm still drooling over that pink purse that flashed across the screen a moment ago. Um, I see that you use glitter vinyl in there. I, I wanted to let everyone know that Designs and Machine Embroidery has some new vinyl packs available that we have on our website. They're brand new. So I'm really excited about those. Um, but it's so fun to mix media with vinyl or fabric for applique. It just turns out really fun. And it's perfect for, um, you know, this raw edge applique too. Because, you know, this isn't going to fray. This isn't going to fray since I put, you know, fusible underneath here. And, you know, another thing about the hoop and press pads, I definitely want to press from the back side when I, you mm -hmm. know, am using this down because this vinyl, if the iron touches it, you know, it's going to ruin it. So that's <laughs> another reason why you want to press from the back side. Sometimes you're using types of fabrics that, um, you know, the iron can't hit. Okay, Joanne gave a shout out to the King Star Metallic Thread. I'm just going to give a little um, information on that. For any of you who are scared to use metallics, there is a metallic from Designs and Machine Embroidery. It's called King Star. It is a polyester core thread. So think of it as it sews out like a regular polyester, but it's wrapped in metallic. So they have tons of colors and it stitches out beautifully. I love it. I, um, I don't have all the colors yet, but I have quite a few of them. <laughs> all right. So all I did was just tape these tabs down in place. They're like a half inch in from the edge of the flap so that they aren't going to get caught in anything, you know, when the edge of the bag uh, gets stitched together. The next step is going to come along and tack these in place so they don't move um, at all when the bag is being finished here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the machine. And kind of what you want to do here is you want to watch because it's going to tack this one down and it's going to jump over to the next one. So you just kind of want to be watching. Sometimes I like to kind of have my hand at the ready in case I see anything go wrong because it is, it is starting to get a little bit thick here and everything went fine. My trick is, Reen, I always keep my thumb or one of my fingers on that green button so I can yeah. really press stop. I, my, first, my first thing that I want to do is just to stick my hands underneath the needle. Right. Um, it's kind of like riding a bike. You want to like stick your foot out to stop. Um, but keeping your finger on that go button is always a good idea, um, especially when you're working with lots of layers. Yeah, and you know with the brother machines, um, you know, sometimes you are stitching things that, you know, it's bulky or, you know, it's you're worried, you're concerned, and you have your hand by the button or you see something go wrong and you go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And it's so hard sometimes to find that little button you know, the little green button. If you just touch the screen of the machine, all you gotta do is touch the screen anywhere, the machine will stop. I didn't know that. Yeah, hey. roller educator told me that years and years ago. And it's like, yeah, because as long as you don't have the lock on the screen, um, right. 
it's a, it's, a, it's a bigger target to hit than being like, oh my gosh, something's going wrong. Where's the button? I can't find it. I put it. my thing in the wrong place, you know, and it's not stitching it down. Oh, that's so such a great tip. Uh, Jan says, what a great tip. Gwen did it. Is. It's, and oh I think goodness. about every brother machine will do that. Um, you know, test it. If you got a brother machine, test it. Right. Uh, Elle Faber says that is so beautiful. I agree. Goodness. <laughs> All right. So we're almost kind of done with the bag here. We're getting real close. So at this point, um, I do have my zipper unzipped halfway underneath there. Let's peek at it. Double check. Next step is to take the last main fabric piece, put it right side down. It's covering the entire hoop. My next piece of foam. So, you know, now we're starting to get a little bulky, right? Because we have, let's just peek underneath here. We have foam. We have the lining on the back side, foam, fabric here. Here's part of the flap right here. Here's part of the um, tab right here. Now we've added another piece of fabric and another piece of foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to again, pin things down. I'm gonna peek under here, make sure everything is laying how it's supposed to before I pin. Just get everything lined up here. And I'm just going to pin through all layers. And you notice I'm pinning at the very, very top. And of course, when I put this on the machine, I'm going to be watching to make sure that none of my pins are in the stitch line. So I love to watch you do this because um, it is a little tricky pinning in the hoop, but I see how you kind of put some tension with your thumb. Yeah, um, put my hand underneath and then I kind of push down and then with the other hand, I go basically straight down. And then from underneath, I'm pushing up with my finger it, it's a little bit harder um, when you get through all these layers, but if I, you push it up, and then now she said something, Barbara, I can't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but there's that pin in, and I'll get one more in. Of a technique to use. And I, I've even started using it not just for layering stuff, but um, just floating in the hoop. Even if I could use, you know, a um, something sticky or I find that it's much easier on my needle when I'm just going through fabric and not a lot of adhesive right. things. All right. Yeah. Like I said, it is getting a little bit thicker. I just want to make sure that the um, uh, pointy part of the pin isn't sticking out because I wouldn't want this to scratch my machine, you know, as the hoop is moving around and I'm fine right there. So now I'm going to put it on the machine and it's just going to stitch a partial line down here to kind of keep these things um, together. And this is where I start to watch because there's only one more step after this. And you're going to see, you know, if things are too thick for your machine. So if you watch the foot and if you see it pushing that foam or kind of getting stuck down inside, then you know you got to lift your foot up. Um, you know, in the settings. And when I stitch the last step, I think I'm going to because again, at the top of the purse, where we have um, the flap and we have the uh, tabs and things, that's going to get a little bit thick up there. So yeah. I'll be raising up my foot in the settings of the machine. It's called presser foot height adjustment. And you rate, you make the number higher for the foot to lift up. So I'm going to go to the back side one more time with that hoop and press pad underneath there because I'm going to take my last piece of lining fabric right side down over the entire back side of the hoop. And I'm just going to try to reuse the tape that I have and get this tape down well before. Whoops, maybe I shouldn't have taken that off there because it makes the bottom piece move. So I'll go ahead and leave that on there and get it taped well up here. And this is really important to make sure that you get this piece taped on really well at this point, because this is the piece that always wants to flip a corner or something, you know, that very last step. So hoop and press pad underneath there, you can press down 
and make sure everything is adhered well. Last step, it's going to stitch the bag together. So I'm going to put it on the machine. And like I said, I'm going to kind of watch. I am going to go into the settings. And I am going to double check underneath there just to make sure everything is good. And I'm going into my settings. And it opens right up to the page with the embroidery foot height. And I'm going to go up just one click. And we're going to get started. And I am, like I said, going to kind of watch. Because if something goes wrong, it's definitely going to go wrong when I um, am <laughs> not watching <laughs> and I'm doing it live. You can also, you know, slow your machine down, too. Um, that's another thing in the settings. Now, see, I'm starting to get into all that bulk there. So, and I'm going to be coming around a corner here in just a moment. Sometimes I like to just stop the machine. Kind of let it do that slow down thing a little bit. I want to make sure everything is good. Okay, I can feel the tab right there. It's coming up to that tab now that's going to be going over. And I, I'm going to stand up so I can really look at it well. One of those little skewers would be good here, too. Yeah, I actually have one right here. <laughs> I love those. But it, it's doing fine, and we're going to be coming around. We're almost at the other tab, and then it's going to come around the corner. And then we're not going to have so much bulk anymore. But you can see how well the machine is going through all these layers with that foam, too. I, I didn't it. slow my machine down, I but I don't run my machine at top speed. Um, the Luminaire can do uh, 1,050 stitches a minute. I usually run mine between 700 and 800 stitches a minute. That's just That's just what I do. <laughs> this is beautiful. I wanted to remind everybody about our giveaways that we're going to be doing soon. I see we have H public shares on Facebook. So those eight people have a very good chance of winning the $25 offerings.com e-gift card. So if you haven't yet, share publicly on Facebook and we'll be announcing that winner very shortly. Okay, I'm just going to take these pins out that I had put in. And I kind of mentioned this earlier where I kind of have trained myself to always look at the back side before I take anything out of the hoop. You know, because again, if you have a problem, if, you know, your fabric had flipped up or something like that, um, easier to fix it if you leave it in the hoop. Although our machines have cameras, projectors and all that, and we can fix things, it is easier if you don't let it happen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, um, I'm trimming away the foam only. And I would do this too if I were using batting. And the reason is um, this is going to get the bulk out of my seams and out of, you know, my corners at the bottom and my corners at the top. And to me, it's kind of easier to do it while it's still in the hoop. And you notice I'm using these big Kai scissors to do this. Um, with this serrated uh, blade in here, I just get it in there and I'm not even cutting. I'm, I'm gliding the scissors along. So it makes it really easy. And again, this is just to remove bulk. And now that that's done, I will take it out of the hoop. It's nice to see that. Is it called sew in shape? Sew in shape foam? Um, so any shape foam. So any shape foam, like yeah. going through the scissors, it makes me just really excited to get that. I'm in my own sewing room. All right. So now it's out of the hoop. I do need to find the opening, and it's here on the back side. I always start at the opening, um, and I cut on either side of it to about a quarter inch uh, to those stitches. Because you got to leave this opening longer because we have to have something to turn in to, you know, hide our, uh, hide our opening. And all I'm going to do now is go around about a quarter of an inch 
when I get up here to where my zipper is, I don't like to cut the zipper short. And the reason is, I don't know if you've made zipper bags before, and if you cut this zipper short, um, sometimes the zipper wants to pull out of the side of the bag. So I leave it about, I don't know, half inch. I just don't cut it down to that quarter inch. So it requires you, you know, to move the tails out of the way to get around it, but it's definitely worth it. And now when I come around the top here, real soon, I'm going to run into my tabs. Let me find them. You're, you can see the tab right there. Again, I'm not going to cut that tab short because it, when you're, you know, putting things in and out of your bag uh, and, you know, pushing down and stuff, you're going to run the risk of having your tabs pull out. So leave them a little bit longer. Reen, I spy with my little eye that you have the hooping mat, the pink mat on your table. You are um, correct. <laughs> I'd like to know what you think about it because I love that. I have the blue one. Oh, I the pink one. Well, you got to love the pink color, right? I mean, yes, I love the pink color, and it's bigger. Um, and it also, if you use uh, Dimes Perfect, um, what is it? Perfect Alignment Laser, their pal. This color, the, it. I don't know how to explain it. The laser shows up a lot better on this color than it does on like, you know, the blue mat that they had. But I love it. It keeps your hoops from slipping around when you're trying to hoop something. If you're using a traditional hoop or if you're using a uh, the Snap Hoop Monster. So all I'm doing here is I'm trying to get around this tab because again, I don't want to cut the tab short. I want to leave it longer, even, you know, just a little bit longer. I just don't want to cut it um, really short. And again, coming over here, I'm running into the zipper uh, again. So I'm just going to get a piece of tape there. Um, leave that zipper end longer. So that requires me to kind of work around it. All right. And now I can just finish trimming the bag. And again, I want to leave this longer down here. But also down here at this opening, I only need these two pink pieces that are my lining. That's where I'm going to turn it. So, you know, this uh, main fabric, this foam, the stabilizer, that's some bulk that can get trimmed out of there. I am going to kind of notch out my corners a little bit. That's going to make them turn nicer. I've got a real thing about corners on bags, you know. I, I really like them to be pushed out nicely. Um, you know, sometimes you see bags people make and they don't really take that time. Um, you really need to take the time and get your corners pushed out well. I got a little bit of bulk up here that I didn't get trimmed too well. But um, trimming the corners, you know, notching them or just putting the little clips into them um, really is going to make them turn out nicer. One more to do, and then we're going to turn it. Because when you turn it inside out, those corners are going to stretch. And if yep. it's not notched, <laughs> it's going to pull in and pucker. All right. So got it all done. Um, I am going to, and another tip too, is when you turn, you know, a bag or something, sometimes people like to get in the opening and then they try to get the, you know, one of these corners in, you really need to go to a far corner first. It, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, it, you know, and it's just better. So I like to get my fingers in there and kind of get that corner pushed down in and, you know, this is going to be a little bit trickier to turn because we have that flap in there. So let me just kind of get it started. 
and you want your tool that you like to push corners out with handy. And I know that I believe All Brands carries that. Let me grab it right here and put it out here. It's the oh, R&K yeah. Precision Turning Tool. You guys have that one? We have a version of it. I'll put it in the shop product link. Yeah, because that um, uh, is very handy to um, get your corners out. And again, I'm, I can feel that flap in there. So the flap is kind of, let me get this corner in. To me, turning something um, live is probably like the worst thing ever to do. <laughs> it's especially when you have that flap in there that is um, right, which is why you want to have your iron handy too afterwards because once you scrunch up all that fabric, you're going to want to. Yeah, you're going to uh, have to to press wrinkles it. out right after. It's it's coming though. I can feel it. Uh, I can promise you it's a lot easier than sewing the handbag on a sewing machine <laughs> and trying yeah, to get through all those little corners and seams and seam allowances with the with the straight stitch but much better yeah. on an embroidery machine in my all opinion. Right. so now i'm just going to put the corners out with my fingers as much as i can and then i'll get the tool in there to get them um <laughs> I got to say this, Sherry said, birth is a slow process. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful And, and too, if you're trying to hold it up underneath the camera. That is um, makes it a little bit harder, too. But see how nicely that corner is pushed out? Beautiful. And you need to take the time to push the corners out. We're going to turn this again. Sometimes people think, oh, I'll get them on that next turn. Well... You know, if you don't get them good on the first turn, you're not really going to get them good on the on the next turn. And we'll get this bottom one here. Lisa says, the turning tool is my favorite notion next to the seam ripper. I wouldn't um, say the seam ripper is my favorite, Lisa. <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> upset at the seam ripper, but it does, it is helpful. I like the, the, the seam, uh, the one that takes out all of the stitches. Why am I having word? Uh, it's Stitch Eraser by Dime. That one's my favorite. And then you can see I got those corners good up there. You know, I do like to kind of just give it a little bit of a press. This is where, too, you're going to want to take um, uh, the opening. That's why we left it longer down here. Turn it in. Um, you can use you know, like a fusible tape, or you can hand stitch this closed, um, whatever you want to do. I'm not going to take the time to do that today, but just to make sure you get everything even and get that stitch line. You can get it, um, you Have know, you ever seam, there. seam tape to hold it closed. Yes, you can do that. Or I know some people <laughs> like to actually hand stitch, but you know, mm -hmm. not everybody does. <laughs> And then we're going to get the zipper. We're going to pretend like I got this, you know, closed up down here because you do want to close your bags up and then just unzip your zipper all the way. Let's get that flap out of there. That'll make things a whole lot easier to turn this now. Okay. We have a Carol. Caroline says, I like to hand stitch. Yeah, okay. I was just going to say that, Caroline. I know <laughs> she's a big hand stitcher. <laughs> but that's that's great, you know. And you can do that too, you know, watching TV, et cetera. Linda so said that she loves that you have linings in all of your bags. I do it in all bags, even if I, you know, make them out of vinyl and, um, you know, the kind of vinyl that doesn't fray or anything. I just can't leave a bag unlined. You want to get these little corners up here too. These are a little bit tighter. Um, the it's sometimes, pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. I am just oogling at the colors that you pick. I love that you pick contrasting colors. It just pops. And we will want to press the bag again. And a lot of times too, you know, when I'm I'm pressing um, at this point, I like to use Angela Wolf's clapper. Oh, you know. I want to. 
<laughs> press and then, you know, because it really flattens things out. If you don't really know what a clapper is, you kind of warm up the fabric and then just kind of press down and it makes a really nice crisp edge. Let me get the back side of this flap um, pressed. It's almost like it absorbs the heat from the fabric and sets it. And then I get my little tabs up there and kind of press the front a little bit. Oh, really? But look at that quilting with that foam in there. We try to hold it on its side. Oh, what a nice texture. And it makes the bag. I mean, this is a nice bag. It's not... Um, you know, flimsy and flopsy. It's, um, you know, it's just a really nice bag. It's hard to see that that color inside, but. That is gorgeous. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we're, I have a few comments that I saved. Um, throughout, I tried to look away from your gorgeous bag to make sure that I'm checking all of them. Um, but before we do the questions, I wanted to make sure that everybody comments hashtag all brands or shares publicly on Facebook for the giveaway at the end. So and um, you know, I also made a strap for the bag, I will make it adjustable. And then all you do is take your little swivel hooks, you know, put them on there. Sometimes I, li I like to use rivets to, you know, connect them on and just hook them to the uh, D rings on the bag and it's done. Oh my goodness. Oh, the comments are coming in so fast that I can't even click them to show. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, let's see. Brenda says, Oh, <laughs> Brenda just said that her uh, granddaughter was commenting and she got distracted. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Elizabeth says, I need to get a hoop and press pad. Elizabeth, yes, we can make that happen for you. All Brands carries all of them. Yes. So in the description of this video, I know that we put it in the chat a few times. There's a link that you can click um, to shop all the products. And as you showed more and we talked about more things, I added those um from behind the scenes all right let's see what else we have uh okay we had a question about the foam and this came in from sherry i don't quite understand the question would it work on the bottom of a rope bowl i don't quite understand quite sure. it either but caroline is the one who makes all the rope bowls and she's in the chat so maybe she might chime in yeah Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure about that one, but you might know. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Sherry said, when we were talking about iron, she said the only time I iron is when my sewing, when I'm sewing and embroidering with machines, LOL. <laughs> Implying that that's she does the best time to them. iron. <laughs> right. That's the fun. You want your time. projects to turn out nice. You got to iron them. <laughs> And that was the whole reason I invented hoop and press pads was because of the ironing. And then after, you know, we kind of went through the process of developing a product, then it's like, oh, it's great for taping. Oh, it's great for trimming. Oh, it's great for applique. You know, you just come up with all these other things, uses for them. <laughs> yes. Uh, and Phil Bex, that's an amazing show. Thank you, Thank Anne. You. <laughs> Okay, El Faber asked, do you think we need to raise the presser foot towards the end? So I would I raise the presser, foot, but the presser foot height adjustment in your settings for sure. Right, I did. I did it one click. So <laughs> um, default on my machine is 0. 0.6. I did 0. 0.8. Awesome. And I've got to remember right now, I'm going to put it back to where it was because you got to put it back. Oh. Yep. Or you're going to have flagging. Does everybody know what flagging is? Flagging is when your needle goes down and then when it comes up, it pulls the fabric up because the foot's not there to kind of press it back down again. And it make it, it doesn't, the little dance of making a stitch does not happen like it should. <laughs> step, it's stepping on toes during the dance. 
Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. always got to remember to put your foot back down. If you remove, write yourself a note, sticky note, and put it on your machine. <laughs> All right. Margie said, can you please show the final product again? So I guess maybe we could do like a recap of the design, the hoop and press pads and different things. All right. So here, let me show you the this one that actually has the strap on the bag. So this is the one that I made, um, you know, before it's kind of made out of a little vinyl. I used um, foam in this one, the so any shape foam. That's why the quilting on here, you know, can really see the dimension in it. Um, it it's a very sturdy bag. I mean, if you use batting and you were holding your bag like this, it would probably flop over. But the foam makes a really nice sturdy bag. The design I put on this one and the one that I did today is from my uh, hand sketch floral collection, uh, which is 25 raw edge hand sketched airy looking designs that All Brands carries. Um, that the bag has a zipper. The bag is not a design for sale. This is something I'm working on. Um, you know, so maybe you know later next week I might have it. If you haven't yet, follow Reen on her Facebook and email and YouTube channel so that when this bag comes out, you can be in the know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and then here's the one I did today. This is the same flower. Um, that other flower, that was the Caesar vinyl um, that I used on that one, which All Brands has some of that too. This one was just fabric, but I did use the foam in it. So, you know, here it is. It's nice and sturdy it's not flopping over you can see the quilting you know the diamond shaped with the uh fabric the bags are all fully lined no raw edges inside if i can kind of hold it up like that um this one has the tabs on it too that you know i'm going to add a strap to later if you didn't want to add tabs you could just skip it and you know it would it would look like this and it would just kind of be a I don't know, maybe like a more clutch type of a bag. I talked about hoop and press pads. Um, let me just grab one here. Uh, I got all my little fuzzies on it here. Uh, hoop and press pads are thick wool pads. They have a non-slip surface on the back side. They're used um, for in the hoop designs. When you're working on the back side of the hoop, the hoop goes I don't have my hoop, but the hoop goes right side down over top of the pad and it fills that void that, um, you know, would be underneath the hoop so that you can press down on the back side of the hoop to tape things, to iron with an iron, um, to trim. I showed you trimming out that stabilizer from the zipper area. Um, I talked about how you can remove stitches. Um, with the hoop and press pad because of the support underneath the um, hoop. What else did we do? Um, applique. That applique should be pressed from the back side because when the hoop is, let me grab it here real quick. When the hoop is turned over, when you're doing an applique like this, so the, this fabric has fusible on the back side like you would on any applique, when you put it over the hoop and press pad and you put your iron on here to fuse this, to press it, the um, fusible that's on that applique fabric is being activated by the heat and it's being drawn up and it's being drawn up into your base fabric. And that's how you get a really nice bond with your applique fabric. And I showed you that the hoop and press pad, it's just a nice little pad to have by your machine. If you'd like to do quilting or you know anything that you got to press maybe after each step or every other step just nice handy to have you don't have to get up and you know run over to your pressing station oh my goodness and i told and i also showed you all of the um well i didn't show you all of the hoop and press pads i showed you all of the brother baby lock but now we have lots more bundles we have ones for Janome and ones for viking and Foff. Let me show everyone the page where we have all of this. It has the video on it. Um, it's allbrains.com slash category slash 4735. And oh my gosh, Reen, we've been doing these videos since 2020. And um, I, I, I hate to see how many we've, it's, it's in the hundreds for sure. Maybe in the thousands, who knows? 
Um, but Rain was um, sewing on her uh, XP3 Luminaire. She cut out the applique with her scan and cut, SDX325. Um, she used the Hand Sketch Florals design collection here. And then below, you'll see all of the hoop and press pads by brand. And then when you click the brand that you have, um, like the first one would be for brother, um, there will be a drop down where you can select single ones or, or all the different sizes. Um, and then we have that iron that you talked about, the Liso that I have and you have and we love, um, the Kingstar Metallic. Um, the exquisite thread. I put the all 288 colors here. Um, so we have that. And then the next thing is the the So Any Shape foam that we use today. I'm definitely getting that. Um, that is a brand new product from Dime. And uh, the Kai Snips that you had and um, the Dime Stabilizers. And then... We also added um, a few other things that I thought that curious <laughs> of, of my other designs too. <laughs> right, right. So um, yeah, definitely um, uh, click that link and uh, you'll be able to see everything that Reen talked about today. I also added, and I need to publish the page that hooping mat and the um, dime stitch eraser. There you go. We're See, on Vicky it. is asking always a dry iron, never steam on the press pad. You can use steam on it if you want. It's you know, it's a it's a wool pad. Um, I don't when I am doing in the hoop designs because, like I said before, everyone uses different types of stabilizer, and I don't know if you've ever noticed if you steam some stabilizers, they will kind of shrink and they will okay. distort. And I don't want that to happen. There, there really isn't a reason to steam while you're doing, you know, an in the hoop design. Um, the dry iron works fine. But right. if you want it to steam on the pad for some reason, you can. I mean, it's a wool pad. You can steam on it. Especially if you have a wash away stabilizer and you put that <laughs> water on it, it's going to wash away. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, we are... We are about to do our giveaways. I'm so excited, but I had some um, questions. Sherry said, what's the finish size of the bag? Well, it's in an eight by eight hoop and it basically takes up the whole hoop. So the bag finishes to be approximately, you know, eight by eight. Cool. And Deborah asked, would you use a magnetic closure for the flat? Uh, yes, I actually had them here. Um, <laughs> I can go back and add them. That's not a problem. Um, the type of ones that I have right here are the kind that, you know, you can't, you know, it's going to have to go into this back fabric, you know, the back fabric here and, you know, the foam only um, because th these are the type where you put the little, if you can see that, the little, I'm going to call mm -hmm. them legs through and then you fold them over to, you know, get it secure. Um, the bag, you do the same way. You'd open it up. You got to determine where you are going to put the, um, your, your, your closure at. And then you'd find where you're going to put the other one. And then same thing, only go through the top fabric, the foam, and get it in there. You can do it. I've done it on bags, you know, many times before, and then get those legs and press them in. I love it. All right, Marilyn says, spin that wheel, Barbara. Okay, yes, ma'am, let's do that. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to um, select the shared winner from uh, Facebook. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one in the comments. All right, so our first winner for sharing publicly on Facebook is Lori Scott. Congratulations, Lori. <laughs> Please email me at events at allbrands.com with your name, number, and address to claim your $25 allbrands.com e-gift card. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. Okay. Get yourself and some hoop and press pads with that gift card. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, let's do the drawing. And our winner from the folks who commented hashtag all brands is today it's gonna be. April! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see your face. She's been uh, watching us since the very beginning. Please
please email me at events at allbrands.com with your name, number, and address to find your $25 allbrands.com gift card. Oh my gosh, you're awesome, Reen. This has been so much fun. Oh, I had a lot of fun. Thanks for asking me to be on, Barbara. <laughs> oh, so exciting. Uh, Rhonda Sigris is going to be on next week. She's going to be doing a takeover show and doing some fun embroidery, so don't miss out on that. Um, but it's always a pleasure. Um, and you come up with the most beautiful pro projects. You team with Dime to make them products for us that are amazing. I just, I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> and we love everyone that's watching. We hope that you guys are very creative and do something fun in your sewing room. I hope that this was inspiring. And thank you for choosing allbrands.com and Embroidery Garden. And where can they follow you, Green? Um, you can follow my uh, Facebook page, Embroidery Garden ITH. Um, I'm on Instagram and I have a uh, In The Hoop Facebook group. Yay, so All Brands has a Facebook group called Sew Forum. Uh, Courtney also has her Scan & Cut Facebook group. And um, we also have our Facebook page. If you type in at All Brands 1976, we should come up um, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So yes, follow us, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, Reen. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everyone.